Hello there and a very warm welcome to another edition of Channel's Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, the digital rights and freedom of Nigerians has always been a case for concern, leading to some lawmakers pushing for legislation to ensure protection and justice for those who suffer from cyberbullying, online hate speech, in full messages and other violations that take place digitally. Some of these legislations include the Digital Rights and Freedom Bill as well as the National Data Protection and Freedom Bill. These will be our focus today on the program. But before we begin to find answers to how far these bills have gone and what effect they will make once passed, let's take a look at the trending topics in the past week. Nigerians have been tweeting about the expectations as the presidential election petition tribunal begins sitting in Abuja. Supporters of the leading candidates in the 2023 presidential elections are hoping that the tribunal will do justice to the claims brought forward by councils of the candidates. These chants of Osime rented the air as Nigeria international Victor Osime scored his 22nd league goal of the season to secure the Italian league title for Napoli after over three decades. A party mood enveloped Naples since Thursday's draw in Dini, and on Sunday afternoon fans let off fireworks and flares in the jam streets around the stadium named after their icon Diego Maradona on a gorgeously sunny day in southern Italy. And again, congratulations to Victor Simon and Napoli. But joining us to look at today's topic, we have with us right here in the Abuja studio, Dr. Chukwe Mecca Ujam. He is an ICT security expert and a highly motivated professional with data design, security management, and networking experience, as well as a solid track record in effective project management, solution deployment, and service delivery. He was also a member of the House of Representatives. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Good afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, we also have joining us uh, via Zoom, Adeboye Adegoke. He works at the intersection of technology and human rights. He is interested in the impact that new and emerging digital technologies have on human rights and social justice. He's currently a senior manager at Paradigm Initiative. It's a pleasure to have you as well join us on the show. Are you okay? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Doctor, kicks out this conversation for sure. us. <laughs> I mean, so much is going on. Uh, you know, but luckily, I mean, you started this bill, you know, this digital uh, uh, rights and freedom bill, you know, when you were in the House of Representatives. But what was the objective, pretty much, you know, when you were trying to put this bill together? What were you trying to achieve with that? Well, thank you. Thank you, Victor. Um, it, I think the driving force or the motivation yeah. uh, behind my uh, sponsoring that bill was... Um, I didn't think it was right that your rights offline um, are not replicated online. online. Um, and so, you know, I say we because I had a fantastic team that was supporting me, um, yeah. set out to ensure that um, citizens are protected. The rights of citizens, um, when you operate digitally on your online, that, you know, you're protected, you're shielded. I mean... In, in, in real life, uh, physically, I can't walk up to you and, and, and give you a slap without being arrested. So, Absolutely. you know, a similar analogy should hold offline. People's rights should be um, protected. There should be um, responsible usage of um, digital infrastructure. And, and so that, that, to me, was the driving force um, behind um, my sponsoring that bill. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, like you said, we need to replicate, you know, the rights of people offline, yep. you know, online. Yep. And of course, we've seen cases where, uh, you know, we've had all of this bullying, hate speeches. What are the far-reaching effects of issues like this? Um, you, you see, we, we, without going um, or looking too far, you've had instances of suicide. Um, recently, we've seen uh, a teenager in America who committed suicide. Um, because of this kind of this kind of um, issue, so, but you, you look you look that's one context. There's there's loss of earnings. There's um, loss of credibility. And so these things these things have an, an impact on an individual. You see, many individuals, many people hide behind the anonymity of a, a black box, a phone, a computer, and 
say and write all kinds of things, defaming people's character, um, maligning individuals, um, promoting other individuals falsely. So th th there has to be a responsible way um, and, and, and a regulation that speaks to protecting um, individuals and the operations of, of the activities online. So it's, it's, you know, it's good you mentioned anonymity. Yep. You know, and I'm, I'm beginning to think, you know, you hide behind this, you, know, you hide your, like I said, the black box or your phone. Uh, is the internet governed? Like, what can we do, you know, to, 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 to find people? Because, uh, you know, these are the things, you know, if you have an IP address either ways, you know, but at times, uh, if, you, if you contact the service provider to provide someone's uh, IP, they might see that as a breach of that person's privacy. So um, I, I will expand the scope of, of uh, in, in answering your question. There, there are, I mean, so for instance, trending um, previously, like last month, was this issue of um, responsible acquisition of data. So, um, and I allude to, for instance, um, ethical, ethical hacking, ethical collection of, um, or, or um, looking at phone, phone conversations, listening in on phone conversations. Yeah. Now, when you, when you look at that, there must be, there's a judicial process. You must approach the courts for a warrant. Um, so you can't, you, you can't bypass that, that whole process. Um, is there, if, if a crime is deemed to have been committed, then there should be a way of tracing the individual. Um, yes, everybody has, uh, every machine has a unique IP address or a unique addressing system. Yes. But the, the key thing is, what's the reason um, behind um, trying to uh, access the individual that is not. Now, remember, I'm not, I'm not against the rights of individuals. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not there to gag or not suggesting or promoting gagging social media. But what, what I'm suggesting and you know, pushing for responsible usage of, or, or, you know, of, of the internet. Well, of course, res responsibility, you know, we, we all owe that to ourselves. But let me quickly bring in uh, um, Adegoke Adeboye, who is joining us uh, via Zoom. Um, Adegoke, so, so looking at, uh, you know, all that have been said, and the fact that, you know, privacy, you know, breach of trust, all of these things are, you know, things that come up on a daily when we have such conversations. And we just, we know we have the, the National uh, Data Protection Bill, you know, also uh, out there. I mean, the Federal Executive Council has approved the bill and they're just waiting for presidential assent. But how would this cover all of these? How would this protect people, especially, you know, with regards to privacy, you know, like you said, you know, listening in on, on people's conversations, uh, uh, you know, a breach of trust. How is this going to um, um, protect people from all of this? Uh, all right, thank you very much. Um, uh, you've asked a very important question in terms of the relationship between the, the digital rights bill and the data protection bill. I think the data protection bill uh, came at a good time, especially when you look at the historical context of the digital rights bill. As of 2019, when President uh, Buhari refused to sign the digital rights uh, freedom deed into law, uh, one of the things he had said at the point is that he wanted uh, the bill to be kind of dismantled so that the data protection element of that bill is removed and taken care of in a separate bill. Now we have that situation, but that's perfect scenario where you have a separate bill on data protection and you have another bill on digital rights. What that means is that, and, it's, uh, and also what we have seen is that the data protection bill will take care of some of the concerns and the digital rights will be will take care of some of the concerns. So, in terms of the rights of citizens, that's what digital rights will take care of. The charity will take care of. But data protection bill, I think, it speaks to a lot of issue, including uh, businesses, including the uh, national security. Uh, if you look at the current bill that was passed by the Senate, that data protection bill, it addresses a lot of issues around how to process data, how to use data, how to use data to achieve you know positive objective to drive the economy. And etc. And in a way, it touches on issues of rights, but not comprehensive the way the digital rights and freedom bill will, will, would address the issue of human rights online. So, the digital rights and freedom bill on its own, it has not been passed by this assembly. But Honorable Jan, with you there, worked with us. You know, he, he sponsored the bill in 2000, uh, between 2015 and 2019, and ensured that the bill was passed by the assembly. But unfortunately, between 2019 and 2023, uh, we have not been able to successfully get the bill to be passed. But if that protection bill has been passed by the Senate, it will require 
uh, concurrence by the House of Representatives before they can send it to the president. But I guess that that will happen this week. But people need to understand where we are in terms of the, what the, the, each of this bill will achieve. The data protection bill will achieve some elements of concerns around how our information are being processed. That we, it will also address issues around consent. But I also think that one of the key things to do is that necessary, you know, necessary regulatory framework around the use and processing of data. And I think it's a great thing. But in the bigger scheme of things, what we, we also want to see is that data rights and freedom they should also be passed into law. So that can also address issues around surveillance, for example. Uh, Honorable Jan was talking about how surveillance should be carried out, the issue of court warrants and all of that. Digital rights and freedom bill is stronger on such type of issues than the data protection bill. It's stronger from a human rights perspective in terms of protecting average citizens, people who are not uh, powerful, who can be target of surveillance activities of law enforcement agencies, but not even just law enforcement agencies, even private citizens can also monitor other citizens because they have certain access to certain technology. And these are some of the concerns that digital rights bill will, will address. In, in, in other words, uh, uh, the bill, they, they complement each other. I didn't get that. Yeah. Did you ask a follow-up question? Oh, no, no. I was like, so the bills complement each other? Yeah, absolutely. They are going to complement each other. Yeah. Uh, the bill, like I said, digital rights bill that was passed in 2019 has elements of data protection and digital rights. But now there's a separate bill on data protection, which has been passed by the Senate. It, it has taken care of data protection, uh, the use and processing of data. Now, digital rights and freedom bill is what takes care of it issues of human rights online, freedom of expression. So issues around ability of people to stay the way they feel uh, online uh, within the ambit of the law, but also in terms of defining what that means in reality, in reality. So does it mean that if I say something and the government doesn't like what I said, would, this come, would, would that be crime? How do we then draw the line between somebody expressing their opinion or exercising their right to freedom of expression? How do we draw the line between that and also people inciting violence online? So that's what the charities and freedom be has done. What let, it has done. Let me, so let, let, me let me let me let me let me hold it up for a bit and, and and you know put this question to to Doctor Doctor Ujam. I mean, how do you draw the line? Well, so you see, the world the world technologically is is, is moving forward at a very rapid speed. Absolutely. I mean, it's alarming. It's 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 scary. I mean, look at, sorry to bring us into artificial intelligence. Um, that, that's another area that needs to be regulated quite quickly. Um, in fact, if I were to suggest, I would say um, any, any progress on AI should be halted because the, the, the lawmakers, the judiciary needs to catch up to what's going on um, everywhere because um, you can imagine that you, you are, we're, we're going into a world that would be controlled by robots and and so so for instance you open your laptop and and a robot is asking you if you're if you're a human now uh, when you when you wrap that around um things that we've tried to i mean it was astonishing i was i was shocked in the eighth assembly we put in i put in so much work to ensure that the digital rights bill was passed because that would have then been nigeria leapfrogging um to the future and and having controls that uh, that that would set the, the populace okay to practice and use the internet. Now, Absolutely. how do you regulate? It's it's very difficult because you remember there's that instance of somebody sitting behind the, anonymously using um, a device. Absolutely. And how can you then prove, even if I was the owner of the device, I could have left it somewhere and somebody else picks it and uses it. So th there are in inherent difficulties, but with, you know, at least let's have the controls in place and even just a way of communicating to the citizenry that there is redress. There's, there's a, a, you know, a process where, you know, you can, you can, you can seek, you can seek even, I mean, there were penalty clauses we put in the bill. I mean, if you, if you came across an individual that was aligning you, you would, you'd address the courts and the courts would, would, you know, find, find in your favor and address, address it appropriately. So there, there was hard work and, you know, fair, fair comment and fair dues to uh, P Nigeria and other okay. we we worked tremendously just to make sure it happened, and we're astonished that when it got to Mr. President, um, I, I, you know, I, I made sure I, I lobbied my colleagues to to ensure it was passed in National Assembly. Mm. That was done, and then it was sent to Mr. President, and it was sent back. Now, I don't see it being passed in Ninth Assembly a few days to the end of Ninth Assembly. Yeah. I will only encourage my colleagues in the Tenth Assembly um, to expeditiously look at it. Um, 
there, there are no naughty issues. Um, the, the, the executive and the legislature, at least in our time, were, were on the same page, we thought so. So, you know, I, I just encourage the Assembly to look at it. Yeah. Then, then have AI looking at, you know, looking well, at the AI. Well, that's a touchy uh, yeah. subject again, but let me just hold you for a bit. We need to take a quick break, and of course, when we come back, we'll take a look more, you know, into um, how uh, things are currently, where the bill is, and perhaps why the president sent the bill back, you know, back then. That's in a moment. Please stay with us. Many thanks for staying with us. Uh, we still have with us uh, Dr. Chukwemeka Ujam as well as Adiguke Adibui right here with us in the studio. And we're looking at legislation supporting the use of technology in the country, the use of internet as well, by extension, of course, technology. But, you know, we're looking at the issue, you know, why was the bill sent back, you know, in 2019? What happened exactly? Um. <laughs> Well, the, I, I guess Mr. President, in his in his opinion, um, felt that the bill was too technical, that there were issues um, that needed to be addressed. But what what surprised me was, you know, as part of the legislative process, we had a public hearing, mm. and all the stakeholders were brought to the same room, and we had discussed it, and everybody's concerns were addressed. So. Um, once the National Assembly had passed it, I, you know, we were very positive and um, hopeful that Mr. President would just append his signature because the executive arm of government was, uh, as the parliance goes, mm. carried along. Um, and I was really passionate because, of course, um, my, my research when I was doing my PhD in biometrics and IT security touched amongst those issues. And I was really really pushful or hopeful that, look, the, the president must sign. Mm. We're done, all the legislative process is gone, and everything was smooth. And everybody's concerns were, were, were captured. Um, I don't know. Well, we are where we are now, yes. so hopefully moving forward, something will be done. But like you said, I mean, the Ninth Assembly is almost on its way out. Yep. So uh, let me bring back uh, Marigo K into the conversation. Okay. Marigo K, uh, in terms of stakeholder conversations, you know, and engagements, uh, What's the plan moving forward? I mean, we all know the Ninth Assembly is already on its way out. So the Tenth Assembly, uh, you know, what's the what's the plan moving forward to engage, you know, perhaps a legislator that would now reintroduce the bill and ensure that you know it gets the uh, the deserved attention? Uh, what's the plan in that regard? Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, so let let me say that uh, the stakeholder engagement is an ongoing process. Like Honorable Jam rightly said. Even leading to 2019, there was a lot of stakeholder engagement. But between 2019 and 2023, which is now, there has been a lot of stakeholder engagement as well. There are more civil society organizations involved. There are also more government stakeholder actors involved. As a matter of fact, the bill that we have now is not exactly the same bill that was you know, uh, rejected in 2019. There have been a lot of inputs from agencies of government, from other civil society organizations, human rights organizations like Amnesty International, like Serap, you know, uh, or government agencies like NIDA, like the NCC, even the National Human Rights Commission, also to just broaden the net in terms of making sure that you capture the input of stakeholders. But going into the next administration and the 10th National Assembly, uh, what needs to happen is to then wait for the you know, National Assembly to be inaugurated, identify a new sponsor, and also identify the relevant committee uh, that will be taxed with the responsibility of working on the bill. So on our own part at Prada Administrative, we already plan some engagement with, with the relevant committee. As a matter of fact, I had some meeting uh, about three weeks ago uh, in terms of how we intend to engage the incoming members of the National Assembly. So uh, unfortunately, the way you know the way the bills are passed in Nigeria, you have to start from National Assembly. So the best has to start again. But the point I just want to make is that there is a lot of work that has been done that can be built upon. So, for example, the engagement we got. So, thankfully, the bureaucracy, the civil service, uh, stay put, even though uh, the, the the political leadership might change. Uh, head of agencies, the head of ministries, 
might change, but the, the that bureaucratic structure is still intact. So the engagement we've done with the NCC, with the Ministry of Communication, with the National Human Rights Commission, with the Ministry of Justice, for example, all those engagement can be a continuum into the new administration. In other words, we'll continue to talk to them as we as we enter into the new administration and as we begin to engage the parliamentarians to make sure that we continue to engage with the executive branch of government too, so that we don't have a repeat of what we had last time. But what we need to see now is that we need to ensure that the first year of this change national assembly, we are able to introduce the bill, at least for the first reading, so that uh, the national assembly is settling down. It's one of the bills that it's going to consider. And we can and, and I also think that one good news is that the guy or the the, the honorable who sponsored the bill in this um uh ninth national assembly has returned this time as a senator. He was an honorable member, uh, or he is an honorable member, but in the next assembly he's going to be a, a, a member of the Senate. That might also be a good news. Uh so that might also give us an option to still work with the same person who, who probably is now in the Senate and we will work, we we'll probably will start the process in the Senate this time. But yeah, those opportunities exist and we'll continue to engage, including with the because I think the media is also critical to, to pushing this agenda forward because that at the at the heart of the objective of digital is and freedom day is also media freedom. As you know, most of your work are done online. I'm, I'm participating on this, you know, conversation. I'm joining you online. You are streaming online. Uh, a lot of your fo uh, followership right now is online. So this is also at the heart of media freedom. <laughs> Well, I, I, I quite agree, and I, I, you know, I really hope that you know this would, um, you know, um, be successful. You know, but what are your own plans? Do you also intend to join them in the stakeholder, you know, in in the conversations and the push to ensure that it is, you know, it gets the deserved attention, and you know, we 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 get to the finish line now, so to speak. So currently, I'm a policy analyst. I'm a lobbyist yeah. in in the clean sense, and definitely, definitely, you can't. You can't have that kind of passion and let it go. Um, just like giving birth to a baby, you know, you must nurture and monitor, even if from afar, uh, the growth. Um, so there are there are ways um, that the legislature can even hasten the process of um, passing passing the bill because it's been in the eighth assembly. It was passed by the eighth assembly. It's gone through second reading, if I'm right, in the ninth assembly. Um, there is something called the assembly to assembly motion. There are people, you know, I, I'll speak to my colleagues. I, I definitely will be lobbying. This This needs to be to, to be passed. And uh, Adego has brought you in as a press. You know, you're also a stakeholder <laughs> Absolutely. In, in, the entire, in the entire thing. Yeah. Well, let's uh, um, just uh, keep fingers crossed. Yep. Watch as, uh, you know, events will unfold. Sure. And hopefully, you know, all of this uh, would be a thing of the past. Sure. And, of course, we'll celebrate it when it's passed. Yep. And Nigerians will have a safe online space to be in. But I have to say thank you, uh, Madigoke, uh, for joining us on the show today uh, via Zoom right here in Abuja, and also to you as well, Dr. Chukwemeka Uja, uh, for sharing your thoughts on this thank as you, well. Hopefully, uh, again, would um, clink our glasses and, you know, cheers to yes. the bill when it's eventually <laughs> passed. So. Absolutely. Well, that's uh, where we are. Uh, of course, hopefully, we'll be following this with keen interest and, of course, we'll be, uh, be there when it eventually happens. But that's where we'll wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Victor Mathias and would we'll leave you with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. This week's top five videos begins with the declaration of Governor Amadou Fintiri as winner of the dramatic Adamawa governorship elections. Omaru Amadou Fintiri of PDP having satisfied the requirement of the law has hereby declared the winner and returned. It is followed by the president elect Bola Tinubu assuring Nigerians that he's hale and hearty. Whatever they like, they speculate. I'm healthy as the sun, and I'm okay. The president-elect still comes on the chart. This time, he's returned to Lagos after a four-week break in Europe. Taking the second spot is a Governor Nyesem Wike launching of the governorship ambition of Senator Dina Malai. Do we want to take cookie? How do we want to take cookie? We must start to do the right thing. Not to say, well, 
uh, we cannot, this man has been our man. He has been, no, no. In that case again, it will be crisis. While in first place is Zazuze Kruna, portable, appearing in court for alleged assault, but granted bail thereafter.